Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm gonna be showing you how to create custom drag and drop transitions inside DaVinci Resolve. Let's get into it. Transitions are one of those things that can push the quality and the production value of your video. I get messages from people all the time asking about transitions, where can they pick them up, how do you create them. I did do a video on a transition pack by our visual. I'll link it up here and in the description below to have your own drag and drop transitions. It's a phenomenal pack. I highly recommend it. Save you some time. But if you want to check out the video anyways, link in the description below. Today I'm going to be showing you guys how to create your own custom transitions inside DaVinci Resolve. Let's jump in and we'll go from there. So you guys can see I created this very cool just pop transition that really just gets you from one clip to the other without taking too much time. There's not a whole lot of spice into it. It's a very simple one. I will have some videos coming out down the road that's showing you guys how to create really cool different transitions inside of Fusion and save those. But right now I'm just teaching you guys kind of how to save a transition for later. So the first thing I'm going to do is take my zoom transition and I am going to delete it and get it out of the way. Um, if you do not see this right here that says power bins on the left, what we're going to do is we're going to go up to view. We're going to scroll all the way down here to show power bins. Most of you probably just have this where nothing's there. So you're going to go to view, scroll down, show power bins, boom. You're going to create a new bin. We'll just say test on mine, but you can put transitions on yours like I did right here. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to jump up here to effects and we're actually going to go to our toolbar, go to effects and we're going to grab an adjustment clip. We're going to drag it down here, drop it above. I'm going to scroll right to the beginning and I'm going to make it the length I want. I'm just going to do 24 frames is fine. That should be good right there. You can make your transitions however long you want. I'm just doing a one second transition because it's a very fast, just pop in and out. Now that our adjustment layer is the length that it's supposed to be, I'm gonna go over here into the inspector and I'm gonna rename this to holder one. I'm gonna go over here to the media pool. I'm gonna make sure I'm under power bins and the folder I would like. I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna drag it up here and drop it right inside here. As of right now and me filming this, there's a glitch inside DaVinci Resolve that if you don't go with that step, it's going to miss keyframes and it's, it's very odd. So I just recommend creating a holder, dropping it in there. If you would like to, you could create multiple holders and say this one's three seconds, this one's two seconds, this one's one second, but go about that same method that I just did and then you have those for later reference. So our next step is to take the holder one. We're gonna drop it right on top of these. There's nothing happening because there's no keyframes, nothing done to it at all. Now with us hovered on top of it, we're gonna jump inside Fusion. This is where we're gonna start creating our actual transition. We're gonna click on Media One and we're gonna hit Shift Space Bar and we're gonna look for a transform. We're gonna add that to our node tree right here. I'm gonna just go over with keyframes on my mouse and find the middle, which would be right here at 12 frames. I'm gonna go back one, two, three, four, five, six frames. Again, you can go back as many frames as you would like and create it as long as you would like. I'm just doing a very quick one right here. Under the inspector tools and transform, I'm gonna click on size and I am going to hit a check mark. I'm gonna go over one, two, three, four, five, six in the middle. I'm gonna go over one, two, three, four, five, six at the end. And we are gonna add another check mark. And then we're gonna go back one, two, three, four, five, six right here where it changes. And I am gonna size it way up. Something like that looks pretty good. After you let it render out, you can watch it, make sure it looks okay. And that actually looks pretty seamless and I'm okay with that. To make this look a little better, we're gonna go into the settings tab right here and we're gonna click motion blur. And we can actually turn the quality up crazy high. Depending on how well your computer is, this may put a real bind and hold on it and even make this crash, cranking that motion blur up too high. So I kind of recommend just doing a two or a three just to give it some motion blur, but not over the top. After you're done with that, we're gonna jump back into the edit tab. We're gonna watch it through, make sure it looks good. Yeah, I'm actually really happy with that. I think that looks really cool. With the adjustment layer selected, we're actually gonna rename this by going into Inspector Effects. We're gonna click on the name. We're just gonna type in Zoom In, and we're gonna put 24 FPS. And I'm actually gonna put 
one second. So I know that it's a one second transition, 24 frames, and it's meant to zoom in. This will definitely help you later, especially if you're putting the frame rates and how long the transition is. After you're done with that, we're gonna grab this and we're gonna drop it up in the same folder right here. Now we can click on this, we can delete it, we can bring this down here, drop it just the same. We could even move these clips, copy them, do the same thing, and you're gonna have a zoom transition that you can repeatedly use. A tip for you guys is create multiple holder adjustment layers that you can put inside that folder and you can name them however you want. Maybe one's 30 frames a second, maybe one's 24 frames a second, maybe one's three seconds long, and so on and so forth. And I would leave those in there. I wouldn't have a bunch of them, but I would leave those in there because then you don't have to go through that step. You're just dragging, dropping it in there, create it. You're not going through a whole painting. It'll save you guys a lot down the road. I know a lot of you guys are thinking this was quite a few steps to create a transition, but you got to remember this is a drag and drop transition. Now that it's saved inside your power bin, no matter what project you're in, no matter what new project you've started or an old one, they're all going to be there. Well, there you go, guys. That's how you create your own drag and drop custom transitions inside of DaVinci Resolve. Give me a thumbs up if you like this video. Drop a comment below and some new videos you want to see coming out. Uh, I'm definitely going to be creating more of these videos showing you guys how to create different custom transitions that you can save and use later hit that subscribe button if you haven't already with the bell notification on so you don't miss any of my new videos you guys are amazing i'm the iron giant i'm out